And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Sejuani. We're going to be playing a kind of Freljord Shadow Isles mid-range control deck that has some good aggressive elements. Also, we, we will be able to do some like Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker, aggro stuff. Um, but then also we're going to be able to control the board with our champions. We have Sejuani that's able to be used as a good removal spell with the Frostbite and Vulnerable. And then of course you have Kindred that will be killing a bunch of stuff every time that we slay a unit will mark the weakest enemy um, so it should be a pretty cool combination and we're gonna have lots of card advantage we're gonna be going with glimpse beyond and stalking shadows and spirit leech so hopefully drawing lots of cards and getting into the deck we got some three sisters in here i've been impressed by this one we can use it for like fury of the north to be able to protect our champions or flash freezer and tomb um, flash freeze could be really nice to have like how we mark the weakest enemy so what we can do is we can, if they have like something that's really you know like a big champion that we need to kill we can flash freeze it you know slay something else mark it because then it'll be the weakest enemy so that's a, a cool combination that we got um, we got Averroes and sentry in here also that's able to draw some cards a couple of doom beast you know we just want more um followers to be able to grab with stalking shadows Doom Beast can get us a little bit of Nexus health to help us stay alive against aggro decks, but then also how it, it drains two from the Nexus, so it deals two damage to the opponent's Nexus. That can help uh, turn on our plunder for our Sejuani and level up our Sejuani and stuff like that too. So it looks like a pretty cool, interesting deck here. Really versatile. Let's give it a try. Kindred Sejuani will go play our five games in ranked. Okay, Twist of Fate Fizz will be our first one. Let's see. We do not have the attack token turn three, unfortunately, which we want with the caretaker. So we'll have to have turn four caretaker. But that could give our opponent a little bit of time to get some other stuff. Um, turn four caretaker can be a little weak to twist a bait red card. Good draw. Ah, yes. of Fire or die. Ready the torches. Alert the village. All right. Yeah, they're passing. Definitely seems like Twisted Fate Red card. So it does not seem like the best time to do a Blighted Caretaker. And it was Twisted Fate. We do have a good amount of spells in this deck too, though. For us to draw into. Let's see what we have. We have two Withering Whale. Two Black Spear, a Grasp. Didn't quite have room for the box. That was one of the last cards that got cut, was the box. This would have been a good withering whale time. Can't say no to fizz. These old eyes still see far and clear. Oh. We're playing a Doom Beast this turn. Of course, I like the Withering Will draw. Um, you know, it doesn't kill leveled up Fizz. 
Or if they go like a terrative improvement on verbal fishes, it won't kill those. But it's good to have access to. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Jury rig. That was. That had to have been the burble fish card, right? That's a great card to have, jury rig. Hold it, partner. Man. Nice. Isn't it devastating whenever like the burble fish spells are just awesome? No, I, I, this is, they played this Twisted Fate on turn four, and now it's, it's leveled up here on turn six. Nice of them to let me block their fizz. What do they pass and get rid of all four of those fleeting cards? I'm not. I know it's so like kind of my plans for Ronation right here. I have a pretty small chance of winning this game. Because like if I Ronation, I only have two mana left and they have a million cards and they just don't you know, play like all these things and, and I lose. So I kind of need them to... Okay, well... It's obviously over anyway. I kind of need them to, like, play things... Put things into play, and then I ruination for some reason. I don't really know why they would, but that's what I needed. Dead in their tracks. All right, GG's. <laughs> Good game. Okay. All in Fiora. So we don't want these cards. Actually, no, let's keep Sentry. We don't want Caretaker against Fiora. It's kind of like the difference between the attack tokens different times. Um, if we have the attack token turn one, turn three, turn five in that game, like we had it turn two, turn four. And so <clears throat> like with Blighted Caretaker on turn four, which I could have played, they they had the Twisted Fate. They Twisted Fate red card. We get absolutely demolished. But if they play the twist, Twisted Fate like they did, like, you know, like how things happen. And then if I get the attack token turn five, get to Caretaker, get to kill Twisted Fate on turn five before it levels up and, you know, drowns us in value. Who knows? Good 
Because a turn five, you know, could have could have taken out a Fizz and a Twisted Fate. We're gonna burn a card. That's fine, I don't really need the sucking shadows. Hmm. So I, I need to be worried about unyielding spirit. If I entomb this Fiora and then it comes back, it will still be like one out of two, right? I think I should have played Sejuani this past turn. I should have played Sejuani here. All right, I really wanted some a couple of cards out of my hand, with having like these glimpse beyonds and everything. Like I had, you know, I had ten cards, or whatever. I need to get some stuff out of my hand. They, if they do Unyielding Spirit, I am in trouble. So I get to play that with having some protection for Unyielding Spirit now. Having the mana to play Kindred and then be able to either Entomb or Spirit Journey. Because even, like, we can mark it, but it still kill the unit with the mark. And so if they Unyielding Spirit, we don't get to kill it. So go for Entomb, but then they have another fight spell. Entomb doesn't look so good. Just the way I like it. There was a lot of cards. No, I'm just going to be passing. I'm not playing Black Spear. Again, I don't... Even before, I didn't want to just play Black Spear. And then they play Unyielding Spirit. Because we're in so much trouble. Fiora games are just so weird. They just... <laughs> 
they're like the slowest things because like both players have to really like think about what's going to be happening. Hopefully no barrier. Or obviously a fight spell. No, fight spell. Well. GG's. Okay, Shivana. Aurelian Soul. Be a good good game here. We'll keep our sentry. Ooh, got all of our spells. I I couldn't see that natural. I couldn't see it at that at all. Sorry, one second. Yeah, it looks like predictions are not working correctly. Dragon blood, Demasian heart. Let the blood boil, half dragon. End them. We'll see what happens here. Okay. Wasn't exactly expecting that, but happy it worked out. Dragon Chow. Dragon Chow. So we'll have seven mana for vengeance next turn. If we want to do that. The summit's final trial. What's that noise? Look out for reefers. So I guess blocking makes sense, because like it still stays the same health, you know, like it doesn't doesn't make it more difficult for my Sejuani to kill that thing. I was kind of thinking of like having this mentor the stones here, of like maybe we can have the mentor the stones um, support this Sejuani. Does make that thing an eight seven. Didn't really have room to to glimpse beyond last turn. Well, no turn seven a Aurelian soul, that's really good. I'm very glad I know turn seven Aurelian soul. Ooh, 
said Kadrigan. I guess they were worried about Ruination. I guess that's what they were really worried about, if like, they play Kadrigan first and I Ruination. But man, those things are big. Have our Doom Beast try to take down this Cadrigrin. Okay, good three sisters draw. We need to find a Kindred. That'd be our best card. Like Kindred here, you know, then we start killing our own things, marking these huge dragons. Like Kindred marking dragons sounds pretty awesome. Kindred just shooting down the dragons. I think they are scared of Ruination from how they've been playing. Come hither, you beasts of glory. So I don't really want to tap out of Ruination. Or like the ability to play Ruination. I don't want them to know that I that I don't got it. So this still leaves me with Ruination mana available. We haven't seen a kindred yet this game, right? Yeah, that was last game when we drew the kindreds. Alright, they weren't scared enough. And I'm gonna need some more blockers. There you are. Okay. It's a good card. We need some dragon sized champions. Oh, well, we found our champions. So the thing about Field of Rush is, like, sometimes it takes the champions from your hand, and I really don't want them to take the champions from my hand. So I'm considering just playing out, like, the champions in my hand first and, you know, saving Field of Rush for a couple of turns. So Kindred does mark the weakest enemy, which of course will be this 1-1. One, one. Yeah, we're playing against Shivana, really in Soul. Some dragons. All sorts of fight spells over there. Gotta hope this works, because otherwise we die. Oh, they still rally? Okay, well, we die. Alright, Zoe Aphelios. Here we go. 
these things, you know, Zoe and Aphelios are more our size. <laughs> more the size of the stuff that we're playing. We can... We can tussle here a little bit better. Yeah, nowhere. Send me the list. I think our opponents have played their champions the earliest they can every single game so far. Our opponents have done great drawing champions. Uh, lost, Talamari. We're 0 3. Thank you. We did have good success with the Jarvan Shen deck. I hope we draw a unit that costs three or less that I get to just play this turn. Perfect. The chains, they never stop. I feel like maybe our deck's missing Unspeakable Horror. Like maybe that's what I... That's a card that maybe we're missing here. Maybe, like, instead of Stalking Shadows, I think that Unspeakable Horror would probably have been doing more work for us than the, the Stalking Shadows. We don't we don't really need more followers. Um, it's like either Vile Feast or Unspeakable Horror, either one. I think that's probably... I think we need another spell like that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Where we go. We'll switch that for the last game. I think I think that instead of Stalking Shadows, let's get Vile Feast slash unspeak Unspeakable Horror. Yeah, Ice Shard is interesting. Ice Shard does, does turn on the plunder for the Sejuani. I think I, I think this deck kind of wants the two mana card, but I sh I shard's definitely interesting. Um, you know, it's it would hurt a card like Spirit Leech. Well, I wanted to play Shark Chariot and Caretaker. So they're gonna have leveled up Zoe. Alright, so they got leveled up Zoe. 
And of course they're gonna have the different celestial stuff. Yeah. Never mind. Good game. Okay, so we're gonna make a few changes here to the deck before game five, uh, as we saw that wasn't quite working too well. Uh, first thing is, you know, so we were we did have a lot of card draw, but it was just kind of drawing more uh, followers. We're gonna take out the um, stalking shadows. I think that that we didn't need more of those. We need a little bit more interaction, so we're gonna have some vile feasts. This can help, you know, kill a Zoe early on. Can help get rid of a barrier. Uh, can help pair up with other removal. Also, just um, just fine to like you know kill our own things. Um, gives us another body, all that kind of stuff. I just wanted a cheaper spell that we can use for interaction. So we got that. Um, we're also going to try Blighted Ravine and Ice Shard. Uh, we're going to take out the Doom Beasts. These are both uh, things that can, again, play, uh, you know, be good interaction for us. But then also they can deal Nexus damage. And so those can also both help level up our Sejuani's. So that could be kind of cool. And I'm replacing the Withering Whales. The Withering Whales just looked pretty expensive just a lot of our cards in our our hand are kind of expensive and at five mana i wanted cheaper options of uh, ways to clear the board so we're taking out those withering worlds we're putting in a box some blighter ravines and ice shard that kind of stuff and then we're going to get one extra vengeance for all of these very large units so let's give this a try i think this could work out a little better than what we just had okay twist of fate Aphelios. Because if we're going to be playing more of a control deck like this, the Undying attacking for two or attacking for three isn't very valuable. So we just don't need it. All right, we're going to keep. The more Kindreds, the better. The box is a good way to kill both of these champions. The turn they play, the champion just costs four mana. They forced us to choose death the and then Vile Feast can just kind of do its thing. So yeah, they'll go Aphelios, because we knew they were going to play Aphelios, because every single opponent has had their champion the first turn they can play it. <laughs> so we knew that they were going to have Aphelios. Um, they'll go Aphelios and then probably Boxtopus here. Um, so the, while the box is my safest play, I kind of want to go with this Caretaker. If the Caretaker doesn't work, like if they have the plus zero, plus two... If they have Pale Cascade, I'll still have Vile Feast after Pale Cascade. There you are. Come, come this way. Reach out, Aphelios. Okay, so that didn't work out too bad. Yeah, we got Nefelios down. Vile Feast was de has definitely been really, really good this game for us. Yeah, I guess maybe that wasn't like the best play by me. Not have anything else to slay. No, it's, it's, I mean it was probably worth it. It was probably worth it. All right. So they're gonna be getting their three, four challengers. Yes. 
We know they have a, a different moon weapon in hand still. Because that was... Because that was a gift from beyond that made that... I guess they could just pass here and I'll just waste some mana. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. No? So basically, I, I wanted to keep Spirit Journey available if they did that challenge. That's what I was worried about. So I get to pass to them because they have all the fleeting cards. A wiggly burble fish, huh? No. These old eyes still see far and clear. So I'm planning on playing the box to kill the burble fish, mark the box to puss. It makes my attack, like, not super great. Like, do I want to throw away these two things? Now, I have all this card advantage. It may not be bad just to throw away these two things. I'm just let them block those two. I mean, glimpse two times doesn't doesn't mark two different things. It's only the first time each round. You have to level up your kindred first. Not much longer. And so, if I just glimpse once, I'm just marking the burble fish. The only the only way to mark this thing is to kill the burble fish. And of course, I don't want them to have that thing to challenge my kindred. Yes, this is only the first time you slay something each round. You mark something. And obviously I could have used Glimpse Beyond and sacrificed that 4-3, but I'm going to just hold on to this Glimpse Beyond for the next turn, mark something the next turn. So now that 08 is the weakest thing. So that's how this is how Kindred and Sejuani can work well together. And now that thing's marked. There we go. Look at us. Beating Twisted Fate, Aphelio. See, we just need to switch a couple of cards around. We need some Vile Feasts. Okay. I overrated Stalking Shadows at first. There we go. That was a great game. It was a great game. Because, you know, they had turn three Aphelios. They didn't play Twisted Fate. But, you know, they had their Box to Post. They had their uh, Veiled Temple, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that went that went really well. So it didn't, didn't start off well, but new version looked good. Okay, so I think that was a, a good learning point here uh, for this deck. I think that the Stalking Shadows were overkill with having uh, Glimpse Beyond and Spirit Leech already, but we just needed um, some more spells to interact with the opponent, and if we take out Stalking Shadows, we can play some more spells. We don't have to have enough followers for Stalking Shadows to always hit. Um, and Vile Feast was really clutch, so that was that was a really good trade 
trading those out. That last game, Vile Feast got to kill a Felios. The second one did. The first one, um, you know, killed the one drop and then also made the spider for us to be able to caretaker away that spider. So the, the Vile Feast were really clutch in there. So I'm glad we made that change. We didn't really do anything with Ice Shard or Blighted Ravine that last game. We did have a Vengeance. No, maybe we didn't have Vengeance, actually. But um, still, I think those are some some good changes for us. Um, but we got to really see what the deck can do there that last game. We got to see the combination of Sejuani and Kindred with, you know, the Frostbite for the Kindred was really nice. Um, so, yeah, that, that worked out much better. So I'll be posting the, the list here for the updated deck list. Those of y'all on YouTube, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this updated deck list for a Kindred Sejuani deck. And if you have other ideas for combining these two champions, Kindred and Sejuani, or if you're somebody who has been playing a deck with Kindred and Sejuani, I would love to hear about it. So leave a comment, uh, let us know about that. Uh, but hopefully you all enjoyed this uh, second version. And, you know, the first one didn't work out, but you know, it was a good, good learning experience. That's the thing. It's like you're going to build decks and sometimes the decks don't work, but kind of try to learn from them. Try to see like, what's the problem? What do you need to address and things like that? So, um, but anyway, that's it here for Kindred Sejuani. So thank you so much for watching everybody and I will see you for the next video.